Welcome back to this episode of our journey with Jesus around the world in the CYC program. Where are we going to go today? Today, we're bringing you all the way across the, across the little river there to the UK. The UK, of course, is also a beautiful place known for some great things, Big Ben and so on. But we'll maybe take you today to somewhere where you may not want to go. Um, this is a, a city called Brighton, England, which is a beautiful city, great churches over there. But one of the things it's known for is hosting Europe's largest gay pride parade. It's number one. It's got the champion, got the trophy. The weird thing that happened with our team is we were there, and just to show you a little bit of how God works sometimes in a way that you don't expect, we had no idea about this parade. What we were planning to do there is to have a spiritual day with the youth and, you know, talk about the Bible and the usual kind of stuff that you do in church. But for some reason, unexplained circumstances, that day was canceled on a Saturday, and we just looked around as we had a little prayer meeting and said, what could we do? What's there to do? Is, is God trying to have us do something else in this city? Lo and behold, one of the locals said to us, one of the local Coptic youth, said, you know, there is this gay pride parade. It's, it's the biggest one in all of Europe. Like, okay, maybe God wants us to go to this place instead of having our usual spiritual day, which, by the way, we rescheduled and had the following week, because you can always do those. Okay, so we go. Just to show you now the, what we were able to do, since there were no video restrictions or anything like that, um, and we had a beautiful team with us from the church, we got together and really, really prayed for our brothers and sisters who are going to be at that parade. And we got a chance to speak with a whole slew of people. We got a chance to, to really interact with people and see where they're coming from and what their background is. Um, I want to be able to have you just check out a few of those clips directly right now. What's your name, boss? Uh, my name is Dwayne. Dwayne? Yes, I come from London to be here. From London, okay. Yes. All right, I came all the way from America to see you, bro. Oh, America! Wow, yeah, yeah. we're in America. New York City. New York City. Oh, great. Have you been? The Big Apple. No, I've never been, but I do like Sex in the City, uh -huh, Friends, okay. and all the other programs that come from New York. Yeah, Friends is good stuff. Yeah. All right, all right, Dwayne. So how long have you been in London? How long have you lived in this country? I actually country? am born and bred from London. Oh, so, sweet. Yes, sweet. This is fine. This is, this is something I'm very used to. Alright, cool man. And another question is, so what's the inspiration for the outfit that you're rocking right here? Um, well, the theme is United the Colors of Pride, so I thought I'd add pink and, pink and rainbow and also a Union Jack of the Republic. Another question, so with Pride in this, in this parade, one of the things that we've seen sometimes is that people in the gay community have like, sometimes get a bad idea about God. Do you feel that maybe people get like, a bad like perception about who God is in this community? Yeah, some may have their opinions of that, like, you know, because, you know, what stays in the world. But then, but then I do come across at the parade that are some gay Christians say that they, you know, they're gay and they pray. So, I mean, but it's just it goes, it's actually, it's fun to feel, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so for you, what's your perspective? If you could describe Jesus, like, how would you describe him? What do you think about him? Well, I would like to think Jesus is, um, well, obviously the Son of God that's, um, you know, same thing. afterlife now like if there is an afterlife and if Jesus can kind of help you get there would that be something that you'd be interested in knowing more about um well if some of the things he was asking me is to do things that I wouldn't necessarily agree with because I have my own personal issues yeah have you ever heard before that like why he came and why he wanted to be friends with us and that kind of thing I probably have but it's not often that it, it stays in my head so I didn't stop, you yeah? keep reminding me then yeah I can understand <laughs> okay okay yeah. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I used to go to church. And oh, okay. I used to read a bit of Bible, but oh, I, wow. um, I don't practice it now. Just, I don't know, I'm just like lost in the church, so it's just not me Oh, okay, okay. I just it, but change. Yeah. So, was there something specific that made it like not for you anymore, or did you just kind of figure like... Well, I guess I did have my issues with whether, uh, of what, uh, how Christianity and uh, homosexuality like the clashes. a big thing for you. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Okay. But when you used to, we used to go to church, and when you used to read the Bible, 
Bible. Did you like what you were reading? Did you like, did you feel like you were connecting with God? Uh, of some of the stories that I know, like David and Saul, David and Goliath, uh, Ruth, uh, Jonah, the whale. Yeah. That one. That's the cool one. Those are the stories that actually come to mind. I can't remember. Oh, all. okay. I'll kind of leave you with the invitation in mind. You know, because it's nice, like, you know how there's VIP and areas here that you can't get into? It's nice to know you have a ticket to come in if you want, even if you don't want to go in right now, but there's a ticket. But, so with God, I just, wanted, I just want you to know, I want you to kind of be sure in your heart that there's an open door with God, that you can come to Him anytime you want, even if you're not ready these days. God is, God is waiting for you kind of thing. Oh, cool, man. So I just want to ask you what your name is first. I'm Steve. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Not so bad. All right, all right. So my name is Mina. Peter. Mina. Mina. No big deal. Yeah. Right, yeah and I, I just want to ask you what, how long have you been coming to this gay pride parade? Twenty years this year. Twenty years. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. And I always dress like this. Okay. Different. Jeans, t-shirt, shorts. I dressed with the dress about eleven years ago. Eleven years. And then I've done sailors and scooters and stuff. And then this year, last year, the year before, I wore a dress. So if I could ask you, Steve, what, what, what was your, did you have a religious background growing up? Uh, no, no. Never had one? My family were all Salvation Army people. Okay. And so, for, currently, if I could tell you to describe Jesus, how would you describe him? I have no idea. No idea. Have you ever thought my, about, like... My mum's people, well before them, was all religious people. Um, they come to my mum and then it was all stuff. We went to study school for... Okay. So, I got you. So right now, that side of the family was all sad about you know people. That was it. We we never done it as kids at all. Okay. So now, if you could describe God, like, do you have any idea of what God might be like? No idea. Okay. What if 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 God was real, like, and if God wanted to have a relationship with you, would you be interested in getting to know Him? Yeah, maybe. You would. Okay. So have you ever heard kind of like the story of salvation or anything like that? You never heard. Oh, there's a friend. So who cares? So now you saw these conversations and I don't know if your heart broke while you saw them, but while we were having them, they were heartbreaking. Mostly because if you notice one thing, if one of the things that you can take away and kind of solidify in your mind is that many people who are struggling with the lifestyle of homosexuality just had a difficult background. You know, that one guy, Steve, specifically that you might have seen, who said, I suppose if I was brought up a Christian, I would have still been one now. I just didn't know. I never really heard the message before. And if you notice when we asked him if he has a problem with us sharing with him what salvation is, even with him and his boyfriend right there, he had no problem. And off camera, we would talk for even longer than that. And what we saw also that was kind of noteworthy is the more people looked like different, the more that they were asking for attention, the more they're actually open to hearing about the gospel, not the other way around. You would think if someone looks very strange, is wearing a mask, is a cross-dresser or whatever, uh, then this person for sure like hates God, hates you, hates Christians. It wasn't the case. So maybe one thing we can keep in mind is, you know, actually an interesting thing I'll tell you, when we were making this point in Brighton to the youth, God decided to illustrate it by stopping on the street and, and see, like we were asking each other, that person right there on the street, how close is he to God? We have no idea. No matter how he looks, no matter what his outfit is, we couldn't tell how they view God unless you have a conversation with him. In a conversation, that's when you'll know how people feel about God. So that's our first idea, is maybe people that look to us to seem that they don't really know God or like God or whatever, we could be more open to them and give them a chance to accept or reject God in their own terms. But more pointedly, more directly now, now, the issue of homosexuality is one of those hot button issues for every Christian around the world. And one, in a beautiful conference, one famous Orthodox priest by the name of Father Peter Luquist, um, he was hosted by His Grace Bishop Yusuf in an evangelism conference about two years ago. And he spoke about this issue and said there were three main things we got to keep in mind. And I invite you to keep those in mind as well in your next conversation. Three things to share with a homosexual. The first thing, might be contrary to what you would think that you want to share. The order here is important, by the way. The first thing is God's unconditional love for every human being on the planet. For us, for somehow, as Christians, we want to jump to, come on, just tell me it's wrong. Come on, that's the thing we got to say first. That's not what we say first. Because for me and you, God doesn't approach it and say, hey, you're doing bad stuff. God first approaches us and said, I love you. 
and I want you to not do bad stuff. So that's our approach initially for anybody struggling with any sin, but specifically for people in the realm of a lifestyle of homosexuality. And that's how it was with these people in the, Bright in the Brighton Parade, and God really was able to use that approach to have a better conversation. The second thing that was taught for us by Father Peter, and God reposed his soul as well, he reposed earlier this year, is that gay bashing, aka us insulting a sinner, is a sin. Sometimes we think as Christians that if I'm looking at someone who's a sinner, then I have the right to say, to say mean things about him, or to call them names, things that are derogatory, say hurtful things. But that isn't the case. We know that the Lord was always gentle with a sinner, no matter what their sin was. He never called people out, except if you were self-righteous like the Pharisees, he would really try to bring you down from your self-righteousness. But someone who was broken, there's a beautiful prophecy in the Old Testament about the Lord Jesus and Isaiah, that says that a bruised reed he will not break. He doesn't break even a reed or like a grass that's broken. He won't, if it's, bru if it's bruised, he won't break it. Same for me and you. We have to be able to see how we won't bruise or break something that's already bruised. And the last one, yes, we do believe as Orthodox Christians that homosexuality is something that is a sin. We stand firm by that. In love, we stand firm by that. And one important thing as well, the former Dean of St. Vladimir Seminary in New York Father Thomas Hopko once said, and actually His Holiness Pope Shenouda, the late His Holiness Pope Shenouda, God repose his soul, also said this one time when he was addressing this issue. Sometimes we make a big deal out of, is it a choice or were you born this way? Our answer as Orthodox Christians is, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter one way or the other. What matters for us is what do you do about it now? If you were born an alcoholic or if you choose to be an alcoholic, it doesn't make a difference. Now what matters, how do you repent? How do you come back? to God. And I'll tell you again, maybe this is probably the most important thing for this segment. It's one thing for us to see UK homosexual people who are dealing with this, but for us in the church, for us in the Coptic church, we have to be aware that there are young people struggling with this as well. As uncomfortable as it is to think about, as much as we don't want to admit it, we've met people, brothers and sisters of ours, who are struggling with this, and it's very, very important for us to be able to show them love and acceptance, to be able to walk them through the healing process. His Grace Bishop Yusuf, again, in the Southern United States, had a beautiful training for the clergy to be able to see how they can walk someone through that healing process of struggling with homosexuality. Maybe you and I, as young people, we don't have to go through the whole process of learning how to go, how to do the whole healing, but at least our role is how do we give Love unconditional. How do we not break a bruised reel? Read rather, sorry. How do you not cause damage where there's already damage? That's something maybe that you and I can think about. Because in the eyes of God, we know that every sin is something that God wants to have repentance for. He doesn't want judgment. In John 3, the Lord Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. The world's already condemned. We don't need any more condemnation. We're good with that on our own. But what Christ came is to be able to show us where healing is in spite of our own brokenness. So I invite you to consider that point the next time you interact with someone at work, interact with someone at school, or maybe someone even at church. How you can give God's unconditional love, how you can show that gay bashing is a sin, and how you can show that there is healing for something that is a sin. Till next time, um, and around the world. See you.